If you're looking for a woodworking project that sells, then this project is for you. Let me introduce you to this. This is a wooden vase holder. You put a mason or a ball jar in the top and it's floating and it does that because it's held on by the lid of the jar. And then the top is an opening so that you can fill it with water and put a fresh bouquet of flowers in it. So I actually already have 10 of these boxes already built, but I need to make another 10 for a craft night that is coming up. So my first tip is if you are going to be making multiples of a project, especially a project that is going to require multiple steps to it, then I definitely recommend batching them out and doing multiples at a time. It's definitely going to be a time saver for you. So the two sides of my box are going to be measured seven and a half and then the top and bottom by eight and a half. So each box is made out of a one by six at six feet long and I can actually get two boxes out of one of these boards. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my chop saw to be able to make repeatable cuts so that I can pound through this really quickly. So there are two different ways that you can set up a stop block on your miter station. And one of the ways that I like to do it is I like to put the blade all the way down, make sure it's not plugged in or turned on. Then I will use my measuring tape to mark where I want to make my repeatable cuts. So the first cut we're gonna make is at eight and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of wood and I am going to line the edge of it up at the eight and a half, just like that. Once I have that done, then I can use this and I can secure that wood in place so that it doesn't move. If you don't have something like this, then, then you can also place your piece of wood vertically and then take a clamp and clamp it down to the fence of your saw. Just like so. Now that's not going anywhere. So the bonus of setting up a stop block on your saw is that you're not going to have to measure eight and a half, eight and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. Measure all of your measurements over and over on each piece of board for each single cut. You'll be able to just simply place your board up against that stop block and cut it and you'll have the same measurement every time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the edge to get rid of that factory edge that might not be square. Once I have that piece cut off, I can slide it down until it hits that saw stop, not saw stop, <laughs> stop block. Now I can go ahead and make my cut. Want to see something cool? If you want to get frisky, you can even do this. Stack up your wood. Make sure both pieces are hitting that stop block. Now I can cut two pieces at a time. Two, two pieces. Voila. All right, so now that I've cut all my eight and a half long pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and set my stop block up to be seven and a half inches and cut the rest of my pieces. All right, so I have all my pieces cut out now. So we're gonna move on to the next step and this is where it gets a little advanced and a little tricky because we need to cut our holes out of the top part of our box. And in order to do that, we are going to need to trace the lid of the jar that you're gonna be using. And what's tricky about it is, if you'll notice, and I'll, I'll put another picture so that maybe you can have a better idea of what I'm talking about, but we have to create this lip on the top of our box. Because if we make the circle, just one size fits all kind of a deal, then your jar is just gonna fall right through with the lid and there's gonna be nothing for your lid to grip on. So in order to prevent your jar from falling through, we gotta create this lip. 
So if you're gonna make multiple of these, you definitely are going to want to make a template, which is what I did. And I did it just out of an MDF piece of board. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lid, this lid, and you're going to trace it onto your piece of wood. And then you're going to go ahead and cut out that circle for your template. So the steps to make your template are gonna be the same steps that I am gonna follow on the rest of these tops. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on and this first piece that you make, you can use as your template. You're gonna to wanna to use the eight and a half inch long pieces to make your holes on. So make sure you find center of your board and then you're gonna trace your circle with a pencil and then we'll go and cut it out. That'll give you your template. And then once you have your template, you could go ahead and just lay that on your board and then use that and trace your circle out of that. Make sure your template is the same size as the board that you're gonna use so that when you line it up, you can have your circle in the center of your board every time. Using the template is gonna prevent you from having to measure the center every single time that you're doing this and you'll be All right, so now I have the center of my circles drawn on all of my boards. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chunk out of the center using my drill press. If you don't have a drill press, then you can just use a drill with a bit and you can drill a hole and then you can take it over to your uh, scroll saw to be able to cut out your circle. I like to use a drill press because I have a two inch bit right here and it takes a really good big chunk out, which makes it easier to use on the scroll saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of my boards. Um, I also like to set up kind of a block, stop block system on here so that I can just line up my board every single time and be able to get the same drill, the same spot every single time. Because we have this huge diameter to work with, it doesn't have to be precise, it just has to be in the center of in the middle of this circle, not in the center of the circle, but in the middle of the circle. So I'm just gonna throw it up here like this, and then I'm gonna drill down, and I'm gonna drill that out. I hope you guys are enjoying this kind of content and all the tips and tricks that I've been given. If you do, please let me know by clicking that notification bell. You can subscribe, like, comment, anything really helps my channel and supports my family and I really appreciate it. So make sure to stick around to the end when I give a price breakdown. All right, so now I have the bulk of the hole cut out and now I'm going to bring all of these pieces over to the scroll saw and I'm going to first make some relief cuts into the wood and then I'm going to cut out this circle as exact as I can. I'm not gonna bore you with any more details with that. I do have a video that's dedicated to using the scroll saw for beginners. I'll make sure to link that below if you wanna check that out. All right, let's get to it. All right, so I have my complete holes cut and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my handheld router to kind of route out that lip that I was telling you about before that's gonna hold the jar. So this is, I, I don't know, you know what these are called you guys, I'm sorry. But this is what the bit looks like and this piece is gonna ride along the inside of my circle so that I'm not, it stops it from cutting away more than I want and it overhangs, my blade overhangs about um, an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch lip all the way around my circle. And what I did was I set it to the depth to where it is about also one eighth inch down from the top of my board. So I will take a few pictures, hopefully that I will be able to explain it a little bit better. So what I do like to do is I like to put scrap pieces, you can see scrap pieces on the bottom here. Again, I'll show you some pictures, but scrap pieces that I can clamp to the table 
so that I can bring this down and none of this is going to be scraping against the tabletop and it'll be able to kind of flow in space so I won't ruin anything. So I like to do that and then I use another clamp to clamp down my actual piece to those scrap pieces. Let me show you a couple pictures. All right, hopefully between the pics and the explanations, you're able to understand exactly what I got going on here. So let's get cutting. All right. So you can see that created about my 1 8 inch lip, but it also left this chunk on the bottom. That's because my bit isn't long enough to cut all that. So we are gonna have to go back after we're done cutting all these and cut this extra lip off the bottom with the flush trim bit. But that's how we do it. So I'm pretty sure this is why they say sawdust is man glitter. And that's why we wear masks and safety glasses. Okay, so now that I routed that stuff, I am going to, I switched out my bit to be a plush trim bit. So this top bearing is going to ride on the inside, the deepest side of the hole, and it's going to shave off this top other lip that we have on the opposite side of the lip where we want it. So now I'm going to flush trim bit all of those off on all of these and then we should be all set. All right, so now that we have everything routed, it would be a good time to go ahead and test your pieces. Well, you should test your piece after the first one to make sure that it fits, right? But that's what should happen. Basically, this lip that we have on here should catch on this bottom lip of your jar. Or if anything, it should fit so that it can't go past this point. So, you'll sit that on top and you'll screw it with the lid and then you're set. You've got yourself a floating Darby. It's pretty cool. Now that we have everything cut, what I like to do is give everything a good sand before I assemble. So we'll sand everything down just with a hand sander and then we'll move on to putting them together. All right, everything is sanded, so now we are going to put it together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our two, our longer piece, the eight and a half inch base, no hole on the bottom. And then we're gonna have our two seven and a half inch pieces going on each side, like so, sitting on top of the bottom board. And then we're gonna finish it off with our top piece. We're gonna make sure that the lip that we have is on the top and we're gonna put it on the top like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue and nail all these together. I am using a inch and a half 16 gauge nails with a uh, nail gun. If you don't have a nail gun, you can also pre-drill and screw these instead if that's something that is more your speed. So I am going to go ahead and start putting these together. All right, look at all those. We got them all done. And now I'm going to go ahead and clock it in. So I have been working on this for about four and a half hours. I have been recording as well and have four hooligans to take care of. So 
Four and a half hours is not too bad. I was able to get 10 of these finished and these are actually for a craft night so I am not going to finish them, finish them. But if you are wanting to finish them, what I did with this one was I stained this one with a dark walnut stain and then I painted the bottom two thirds white and then this is just some tool with the ribbon and I will link the supplies below in the description. Um, let's go over the price breakdown. So the total cost for 10 boxes was a total of $140 including all of the materials as well as the jar and the decor. And again, those products are linked in the description below. I would sell as two different options, the frame alone and then the frame with the decor and the jar. Depending on which option you choose, you can make up to $43 per hour. This was a really fun project for me to build and I was able to also have a really fun time doing a girls night where I had over 10 ladies help build their own. They all super love this project and it's the perfect addition with some fresh flowers in it to put as a centerpiece on the table or for wedding options as well. I do have a few other wooden projects that I have built for flowers as well so make sure to check those out. Those are also really popular items for others who like to display their flowers. And don't forget these options as well for Mother's Day. They make the perfect gift. 